Hi, and welcome to the second part of the macromolecules lecture, and we're just going to jump right into it. Lipids, otherwise known as fats, come in lots of different shapes, sizes, and forms, uh, but all of them are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sometimes phosphorus. That's what the P stands for, not potassium. Potassium is a K. So carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and then sometimes phosphorus. We have a triglyceride, which is composed of one glycerol molecule and then three fatty acid chains. Tri meaning three, and that's the three fatty acids. Um, and we end up seeing this in adipose tissue. Now, adipose tissue is fat. Fat found underneath your skin, in between your organs, on your butt. Fat is all adipose tissue. So uh, triglycerides are the main fat that we end up seeing in um, fried like pork skin and like poultry skin and all of those other things. If you end up eating fat on a piece of meat, that is a triglyceride. Now phospholipids um, contain one glycerol and then two fatty acid chains. Uh, and this is going to be really, really important for your cell membranes. We end up seeing uh, the cell membrane around every single cell. It's the border there. And so the cell membrane is made up of these fats. So fat is not just there for like insulation and energy storage. It is also the boundary in every single cell. And this is true for humans. This is true for dogs, cats, all animals, including lizards, birds, but also there for plants, including trees, grasses, and even fungus like mushrooms. So we end up seeing it in all forms of life, including bacteria, everything. And then we have steroids. Now steroids, we normally think about them and think about like the athletes that are injecting steroids in order to get buff uh, for their uh, sport or whatever they're doing whether it's to impress girls or who knows. Uh, it has a four carbon ring structure, but that's not really important. What you need to know is that steroids come in a lot of different shapes and forms. Um, most commonly we think about steroids as like testosterone for those like athlete injections, but it's also cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually used to make testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, a lot of other hormones. And so steroids are a much more encompassing group than what we typically think of as like the athletes. Now, lipids also come in unsaturated and saturated. So we have the triglycerides and the fatty acids and then steroids. Um, or triglycerides, phospholipids, and the steroids. Now, the trick is the fatty acids in both triglycerides and phospholipids, those are the things that are either saturated or unsaturated. So when you have um, fat in your body, that is produced in a triglyceride form from the fatty acid chains that are either saturated or unsaturated. Um, so the difference here, butter is a solid, olive oil, vegetable oil, all liquids. Um, and that is because of their molecular structure. Carbon is able to bond with up to four different molecules at the same time, or not four different molecules, four different atoms at the same time. And that's really, really important. So we see saturated fats, they are all single covalent bonds. Saturated fats are single covalent bonds. Unsaturated has a few double bonds here, which means that it is bent, it's crooked a little bit. Um, so the word saturated, you can think about a sponge. If the sponge is saturated, it is full of water. Um, and with saturated fats, those carbons are full of hydrogens. You cannot fit any more on. Whereas for the unsaturated fats, we could put two more hydrogens there, but because it is unsaturated, it does not have those. So this is the difference between butter, olive oil, vegetable oil, solids, and liquids at room temperature. So we've got the straight line versus the bent lines. Now, this is the triglyceride. Over here on the left-hand side, we have the um, glycerol molecule. We have the three fatty acid chains. These two, because they are straight and full of hydrogens, are saturated. And then this one here is unsaturated. 
beta-3, meaning triglyceride. And then this is your phospholipid. Um, this is a cell membrane, and you can see that we have like a head and then two tails. They almost look like party balloons. Um, but in general, this is what makes up all of your cell membranes. And then these are steroids. Uh, we've got cholesterol here, and then you can see how similar cholesterol is to testosterone. It's just a few small changes that make cholesterol into testosterone. And then progesterone, progesterone is another hormone that is found in bodies, um, typically found in female bodies to regulate your um, ovarian cycle. So uses for lipids, long-term energy. It's energy storage, fat is storage. Padding and insulation. We got structural for cells, which is a cell membrane, and then we also have cell horm or hormones, waterproofing, um, and you might have noticed that water does not mix with lipids, and it is because lipids are nonpolar. We talked about this a while ago. Water is polar, fats and lipids are nonpolar. So it's a really good waterproofing mechanism that we end up seeing in all sorts of animals, especially like ducks. They'll have lipids on their feathers to keep the water from going into their feathers. Go ahead and summarize carbohydrates and um, lipids for me here, and then we're gonna move on. Okay, nucleic acids and proteins. Nucleic acids, we're adding more elements in here. So proteins, nucleic acids, they have a few more elements than lipids and carbohydrates. We've got carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and then phosphorus here, once again, that P. So we end up having a monomer, which is a nucleotide. Now this gets a little tricky because um, mono means one, but this one unit has three different components and you do need to know these three different components. Um, it's a phosphate, a sugar, and then a nitrogen base. And those three things together make up the nucleotide. Now, when we get into our polymers, that's going to be DNA. DNA is a polymer. The sugar is deoxyribose, and then the nitrogen bases are adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. I'm just going to hope that you guys know your A, T, G, and C. RNA is another type of nucleic acid, and instead of having deoxyribose as a sugar, it has ribose as a sugar, and then it has almost all of the same bases as DNA, but instead of T, it has a U. So instead of thymine, it's got uracil. So let's look at the DNA nucleotide a little bit more. We have the phosphate, we have the deoxyribose sugar, and then we also have the nitrogen base. Now, DNA stands for something important. Deoxyribose, which is a sugar, nucleic acid. So DNA is a type of nucleic acid. The NA in DNA stands for nucleic acid acid. So DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. And we have these four different nitrogen bases. Now this is going to be really important later on, especially when we talk about genetics, because DNA is all about what genes you have. But the DNA here um, has adenine, which likes to pair with thymine. You can see how those pieces fit together nice. And then guanine likes to pair with cytosine. So in the end, we have adenine and thymine, guanine, cytosine. A is always going to match with T. G is always going to match with C. I like to think about it like apple and tree, car, garage. The apple is on the tree, the car is in the garage. So we've got apple tree, car garage, A, T, G, C. Super, super important. Please do not forget that. Apple, tree, car, garage. So your DNA looks like this. You can see how the uh, red and yellow are always pairing together and the light blue and the dark blue are always pairing together. That's the A and T, G and C. Scientists will just like randomly choose different colors to show this because DNA does not have a color. DNA is just like clear, goopy string stuff. Uh, but they wanted to visually represent this for you. Now that DNA twists up in order to create something called a chromosome. And humans have 46 chromosomes. You get 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad. And that ultimately is what makes you. Your DNA is like a recipe and the proteins that are made from the DNA is what makes you. So your hair, skin, nails, eyeballs, all of that is proteins. And the DNA is the instructions for how to make the proteins. So moving on, RNA. 
RNA is the copy of the recipe. So it's really, really similar to DNA. It's just not the original stuff. We've got the phosphate, we have a sugar, and we have a nitrogen base, just like the DNA nucleotide. We've just got two big differences. First, RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. So we're looking at that sugar, ribose nucleic acid. And we also have it uracil instead of adenine. So it used to be adenine pairs with thymine, apple with tree, car garage. Now we're looking at adenine and uracil. So now the apple is with you. And the car's still good in the garage. But adenine is now with you, car and garage. RNA structure. DNA is double-stranded, so it's got like the A and T pairing together here. Um, for RNA, it's single-stranded, and RNA tends to like curl up on itself. Uh, so it's single-stranded, and um, our uses for it, nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, those are both genetic information. Those are the genes that make you, genes, genes, genes. Now, we also have one other type of funky um, nucleic acid. We have adenine, which is the same that we saw in RNA and DNA. We have a sugar, but now we have three circles. So those three circles, if you guys remember back to the other structure, the circles are phosphates. You can see them right there. So ATP is adenine, that nitrogen base, with three phosphates, one, two, three. So ATP stands for adenine triphosphate. And when we have ATP, oops, sorry. When we have ATP, that is like a fully charged battery. You've got all of this energy, you are ready to go. It ends up breaking that bond to create ADP and that bond breaking is a energy releasing reaction, if you remember that from the first video. And that energy releasing reaction ends up um, providing energy for your muscles to contract, for you to move up and down, for you to chew, for you to swallow, all of those things, that is thanks to ATP. And then we end up creating AMP, we're really not using that too much, that's just found in RNA. So our last little bit here, we're gonna start up on proteins. I'm gonna make a whole new video on this one. Um, please make sure that you remember everything that I said and make sure that that uh, guide is filled out as well.